Welcome to Web Visions Portland. We've got uh, a lot of surprises for you uh, these next couple of days. Uh, my name is Brad Smith. I'm the executive director for Web Visions. This is our 15th year. I don't know if uh, if you guys are one to celebrate, but I think we're pretty we're pretty excited to to have made it 15 years. We also have somebody on Skype right now from Barcelona who's going to say hi in just a little bit. Um, so we had two days of workshops before uh, the sessions today, and uh, we were really super excited to have uh, experts come in and do a new format for the show. Um, we tested it out in Berlin last October, and also in New York, and it's been kind of a cool uh, new format. This year, um, we have a theme running through the show. It's called Hack Happiness. and um, we picked up that theme because we we wanted to really have people take an active uh, role in their lives and their organization to become happier um, people because happy people um, can do better work, I think. Um, Stefan Sagmeister came out uh, for, with uh, AIGA Portland last fall during Design Week Portland um, and did a talk. And his talk was about design and happiness. And he did an, an, a, an ex exhibition. Um, and part of the exhibition had a series of mach gumball machines. And people could select a gumball um, for how happy they were. And it became a visual display of happiness at the design exhibit. And so, you know, why should we care about happiness? I mean, you know, there's, you know, what's the relationship between uh, technology and programming and design and user experience? Um, well, there's this guy, uh, Carl Jung, and he came up with five things aspects that he thought helped contribute to happiness. And, you know, some of these are like good physical and mental health, the ability to understand and perceive beauty like art and nature, um, you know, uh, some sort of philosophy. It could be religion, it could be just something that kind of gives you uh, a way to cope with life's up and ups and downs. Um, also good relationships. Um, so, and, and that could be, that's part of community and how we connect with others and, and, and how we feel about those. And then also a reasonable standard of living and satisfactory work. So, you know, that's kind of a big one for a lot of people here um, as, you know, you try to figure out where, how you fit in in your, you know, place in life and what you do. Um, but we'd like to also add that, you know, doing meaningful work or contributing to a greater good is also something um, that is important to people. And we see that more and more, especially as we do uh, workshops for high school kids and students. We ask them, you know, what your goal in life is, and almost a good majority of the students will say, I want to do something, you know, for social good or something to do that's important that's going to help the world. Um, and when we're happy and we're collaborating and we're being able to work together, we can do pretty amazing things. This is a, a, a photo of the human towers uh, in Barcelona. So basically, people get on each other's shoulders and create these really massive towers. Um, and so if you're looking at this, you probably think, you know, I, I, I wouldn't want to participate in something like that. But Maybe, you know, like we can, can use that analogy for our own work and what we do in our practice and think of, of each day ourselves doing something like this. We're contributing to something that's bigger. We can, we can move mountains if we care to, and we have the vision to do that. Um, this is a shout out to the people from Chicago, but um, the, the uh, Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls won six championships from 1991 to 98. And... Sure, they had great talent, but they also were able to work together as a team very well. And by working together as a team, you know, they were unbeatable. Um, so they all had the hard skills. They could play basketball. But they also had skills of working together. 
and that collaboration and team play, those softer skills were essential for them to, do the, to perform the way that they performed. So what we feel is if you're happy, you're more likely to be able to collaborate and you're more likely to be able to discover and create. And that's important. That's really important because if we're developing the organizations and innovation and the practices that are gonna take us into the future, that's what's gonna do that. So a lot of people will ask us, well, Web Visions, why are you focusing on happiness? Why are you focusing on collaboration and stuff like that? Why don't you focus on like, you know, AngularJS or JavaScript or, you know, anything else out there that people are interested in? The hard skills are something you can learn, and the hard skills are now, because of YouTube and all these other ass, uh, uh, channels out there, readily available. So if we can learn how to learn, how to question, how to uh, understand problems and solve them, then we're more likely to be able to do that. Happiness takes a lot of work, though, because you're not always happy. I mean, if you look at... Um, the kind of, and this looks familiar for you, uh, for those of you who went to Don Alisha's workshop, happiness is kind of like a story arc, and it actually looks like a, you know, a golf, dri golf ball drive or whatever. And um, um, obviously I'm not a golfer. Um, the, 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 the happiness path takes some work, and so if you ever have got, done something important, you'll know that it's like, it's not always a happy thing as you progress on that path to doing something where you feel a great deal of happiness. Um, if you raise a family and have kids, you know that it's not always easy, but usually there's a lot of satisfaction and love as a result. So, you know, happiness is complicated, man. There are lots of facets. And for communities, teams, families, um, happiness gives us the drive to make magic and cool things happen. But we just have to, in a lot of times, remind ourselves of that every day because we tend to get so hyper-focused on, on the now of like all of the, dis the different aspects that contribute to happiness and we for kind of forget to take a moment to breathe and to appreciate where we at, we're at. So um, let's meet David really fast and I wanna show you something. Um, okay, let's go over here. Oopsie. Uh, tab. I'll try it. Hello? David, can you hear me? Uh, so, uh, do we have audio coming out? Let's see. Can we hear you? Say hi. Ah. Darn it. Hold on a second. Let me pull this. <laughs> okay, now we'll do it the, the, the manual way. Okay, it wasn't coming through the sound over there, so um, say your little message if you can. Well, hi, Vision Portland. Greetings from the sunny Barcelona. I know the weather there. I hope that you will enjoy uh, Web Visions as far as I'm enjoying collaborating uh, with Brad and all the team with the happiness. And, well, that's all I can say from here. <laughs> Thanks, David. Um, the reason why I wanted to bring David in is because David went to Web Visions last year and we started to think about ideas on how to collaborate on something. And so um, we actually are working right now on this app called uh, Hack ha the Hack Happiness app or the Happy app, we like to call it. And so this is just a you know, quick prototype of it, and we're actually doing a hackathon, David is doing a hackathon soon, to actually build this app. And it's just basically a big happy button that you click to say, I'm happy right now. Because there are times we, I think we need to remind ourselves of our kind of, you know, momentary happiness so that we can kind of continue to build that um, practice of feeling happy. Um, and part of that also is, you know, taking some chances and, and uh, experimenting. Um, and, and in town, and uh, we're working with another company called Neologic. And the idea there was, uh, why don't we take this idea of uh, Borges uh, talking about 
metaphor and how we can, how metaphor and language interact. And Corey Pressman at Neologic said, why don't we do a site so that we could teach poetry to robots? And so we created this site, poetry4robots.com. And if you'd like to, check it out. And actually what you can do is marry an image or, or tag an image, basically, with a poetic phrase. And so what that's going to do is hopefully change the way search engines look at images and be able to search in a very a much more organic, uh, natural human way. So you're going to hear presentations from experts around the world. And we're doing a bunch of experiments and, and cool things. Um, and just remember to keep perspective as you're doing this, um, that all of the, the work we do, you know, people say embrace failure. Thomas Edison said, I've not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that, it won't, that something won't work. So however you want to frame it, keep it, keep it positive so that you can keep going and um, do meaningful work and create, uh, do work for the greater good too.